Hi, Tanya. Am I pronouncing your name well? <laughs> yeah, pretty much, actually, Tarania. Okay, thank you. So thank you so much for uh, being part of this little project, which is to present different uh, healthcare professional working uh, in Montreal. So uh, I would like you to introduce yourself first and to tell us a bit more about you when it comes to the profession you're practicing. And uh, yeah, and after later on, I will ask you like quick questions that are very interesting for the public. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited. Um, yeah. So yeah, my name is Tyrania Veliprim. Um, I'm a second year medical student at McGill currently. Mm -hmm. um, I used to practice as a nurse predominantly at the ICU for a couple of months, maybe like eight months. Mm -hmm. um, and now I just work as a nurse at like COVID centers and COVID vaccination clinics and whatnot. Oh, that's very interesting. So like you have a lot of background, like so you're a nurse, and now you're going into the medical field. So this is why I invited you because I found it very interesting to have like someone who practice actually as I am uh, a nurse uh, in, a spe in, a spe in a specific field and also who will in the future be a physician. So you have like, I think like two kinds of um, the best of, bo of both worlds, if I, if I can speak like that for your, uh, your future uh, uh, profession. So let's first start with the first question. So could you describe uh, your profession to us uh, from uh, a nurse perspective and from a medical student, a future physician? Let's go. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> um, I guess to start things off as a nurse, uh, so I went to, I did health sciences in college and then did my undergrad in uh, at McGill for three years. So it was a three-year bachelor's. Mm -hmm. And then after that had graduated, worked at the Royal Victoria Glen site for a couple of months and then went on to the ICU. Um, I guess in terms of the profession itself, it's like there's multiple venues in Quebec. You can go through um, CEGEP, which is the advantage, uh, and you can also do it through university. And the thing about nursing, it's super cool. It's super diverse. You can change yeah. um, any type of field you want, essentially, in accordance yeah. to your interests, which is awesome. You can work everywhere with, with the uh, nursing <laughs> nursing degree everywhere. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then the, on the other hand, for as a med student, uh, so it's variable in accordance to the school you go to, of course. Um, but here, let's say at McGill, it's a four year undergraduate program. Mm -hmm. um, and then after that, like nearing the end of your fourth year, you're supposed to apply to residency, which is kind of like, let's say like applying to med school part two, but into the field you want to specialize in. So whether it's like, and it's usually like a specific field. So mm -hmm. like, let's say you want to become a family doctor or an emergency room doctor, et cetera, you would apply into the field that you're interested in and then complete training for that program. That's so interesting. I guess you you like to study because like it's uh, it's a long path, you know. But it's worth it at the end of the day because you're you're gonna practice what you you love. And so, in your opinion, what are three uh, misconception of your pr profession uh, often that you heard from different citizens uh, during your practice? Yeah, this is a, a loaded question. Um, I guess I'll focus on the, the physician portion of it. Um, one really common one I think we, we've probably all heard is that like, we do it for the money. Yeah. And, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I have heard that a lot. Um, and I, I find it like kind of funny in a sense that like, if we were doing it for the money, I would not have chosen a program where I have to stay uh, like 10 years plus in for the money. <laughs> like, exactly. Um, and I, it's just more to like hi highlight the fact that like if I didn't care and if there wasn't passion in it and if it wasn't for things like I, I love sitting bedside by a patient, like by a patient's bed and talking, you know, like they have so much stories and they have so much insight and like working with a team. It's so fun. Like if it wasn't for these things, I don't think I would have devoted studying no. for 10 years. I don't think anybody <laughs> would. <laughs> Not at all. You, you already had the nursing degree. So, you know, and it's a lot of work also being, uh, having this degree. So if you're doing it, it's because of a passion that, uh, maybe you, you figure it out while I guess maybe you during your, 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 your nursing career so yeah so how what how when did you did you did you figure it out that you would like to be a physician I think so when I was working in the ICU like I love the ICU my heart has mm -hmm. stayed in the ICU I want to go back to the ICU yeah. um but it, it's difficult because as we know nursing is understaffed overworked underpaid mm -hmm. <laughs> the the same cycle of things and me as a person, 
I love I love solving I love solving things. I love solving puzzles. Yeah. I love putting pieces together. And unfortunately, the the circumstances in nursing didn't allow for that as much as I wanted to. Like I love looking at imaging and you know like what's happening in this image. Yeah. <laughs> well, like and nursing you're you have so much to do and I like loved being with the patient, but like mm-hmm. it took away from the other aspect of it which I like loved doing, which was like the puzzle and the di- coming up with the diagnosis and you know discussing about the findings. So I just kind of sat down and really evaluated like what is it is it like the the hands on that I like in the bedside or is it like the puzzle solving and what not along with the bedside and I think I ended up just choosing what I thought was a better fit for me. Mhm. And that's going with that. Yeah. That's perfect. Yeah. So it comes from your professional experience. Yeah. So uh when can we I I know you're not a physician yet but I guess you have kind of an idea of maybe your specialty you would like to practice in the future uh, but it's a it's an open question when can we use your ser- your services as a future physician uh, a future doctor vali puram <laughs> <laughs> um i think the luxury of of like obviously people becoming doctors is that very similar to nursing that the range and variability that exists in the profession is so large there's a vast amount of like venues people can take and like a lot of people don't know but there's like very very there's like rural medicine and there's rural doctors um mm-hmm. there's doctors who work predominantly just in the community there's family doctors ER physicians there's so many subspecialties and i mm-hmm. think that's a misconception that people also don't like or don't not even a misconception i would say just like don't know is that um there's a lot of subspecialties so yeah. there isn't going to be one doctor that knows everything um and that's the beauty of it because you're going to have people who specialize in a specific field and they're they're knowledgeable in that specific field so you have cardiologists who know a ton about the heart and then you mm-hmm. have nephrologists who know a ton about the kidney and then everybody just works together to try to mm-hmm. really like optimize care for people so like you can find them anywhere you can find them at CLSCs you can find them at clinics in the hospital <laughs> out yeah. in the community all the community all kind of healthcare facilities but uh yeah the, oh my god that's so interesting and um and what yeah you already uh, this was the next question and what kind of environment we can find the services of uh, your profession so like you said it can be community it can be like second line third line depending on uh, the specific problem or needs for uh, the the individuals So the last one which is I found it cute because you know you will have maybe tons of people who will watch li- your little capsules during the summer and were uh and you're very inspiring because it takes a lot of hard work and dedication for going through your journey so do you have a little uh little words or speech uh for uh, the, uh as an encouragement for someone who, who would like to practice uh into your field whether it's nursing or a, uh, a physician in the long term um yeah definitely honestly i think i would say like well i have a couple of words i think the one thing is go with passion so whatever whatever like ignites that flame of excitement in you like do it um it's scary it takes a lot of effort it might take time just do it and try to try your best to do it and if you if you need help then seek the help to do it but if you want to do it then like you can do it um I, honestly life might might say otherwise and try to try to prevent you from it but there's ways yeah. to get around it and you will get to where you want to be eventually mm-hmm. and like along that line is like we we do a lot of comparing ourselves to people and we do a lot ourselves of like one path is the fixed path but there's no one path that's determined right Yeah, so my path right. will not be the same as anyone else's so like I may have done it this way and there's a lot of people that didn't mm-hmm. um so your path is your own journey and just kind of take it and see where yeah. it takes you yeah it's 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 true though because everybody has their own journey and you need to think of what is your next step so, so thank you so much for coming I hope like you you like like this little uh interview and uh, uh can you tell us a bit like if uh, someone is interested about what you're doing into the social media because uh, I've looked on the social media and it's because of the social media that I found you so can you just tell tell us a bit more like uh, about your account and what you're doing and what you're putting in uh, it will be very interesting for the for uh, the audience Of course. So I started a little social media account called Thara Synapses. And uh, what I want to do is kind of focus on like um, 
disseminating knowledge, whether I learned it in school, learned it in like textbooks, wherever I learned it. Because I feel like before I got into the health field, I didn't know a lot. And I have friends and family who don't know a lot. And then like friends are friends who ask questions, you know, and there's a lot of basic um, like health related information or just general information that I find isn't easily accessible. Mm -hmm. And obviously I don't know everything far from it, but I'm trying to um, help kind of reduce that gap in health literacy, like try to get people to know themselves and know their health better, which Mm -hmm. then at the end of the day kind of empowers them. Mm -hmm. Um, And I I try to create a platform to give like patients the voice and, you know, seeing it from the perspective of patients. Mm -hmm. We see a lot of like healthcare professional perspective, but like, what does it feel to be on the other side, you know? So it's kind of like a way to really engage with community and making health more like something that we all can participate in rather than it being like, Mm -hmm. like something healthcare professionals only do. Yeah, I agree. And uh, the last question will be, how can uh, the nursing, uh, your nursing background uh, will influence your, your, you as a physician in the long term into your practice? Yeah, so I, uh, I will always, always say that I'm a nurse. I think I was a nurse yeah. at heart. I've always been a nurse. Um, yeah. And it's just as simple as going to, like going inside and like advocating on behalf of our, our fellow mm-hmm. colleague nurses and mm-hmm. working with them. I think there's a lot of like misconceptions that there's like this, this um, hierarchy and, you know, mm-hmm. and like working in situations where that, that might be felt to like, to make it understood that we're all, working together as a team it's like yeah. I think at the end of the day the takeaway is that this is a team effort and the care can't be given if it wasn't for all the key players and nurses are mm-hmm. key players of the team and will forever be and they they have a vast amount of skills and knowledge that you can't get elsewhere yeah thank you so much oh my god I'm so happy and uh best for your your project can't wait to see you like progressing and uh, to su- to succeed with Stanton. <laughs>